Good morning and hello. What's up, everyone? My name is Mick O, and this is Photo Mechanic 101, an introduction to the basics of using Photo Mechanic uh, if you're new to Photo Mechanic. Thanks very much for coming to this webinar. Uh, point out right now that if you have any questions at all at any time, uh, you don't need to wait to the end. You can put them in the chat window or the chat box to the right of your screen on YouTube. Uh, second thing, after this video is over, if you need to go back and rewatch it, it should be available at the same URL. Uh, YouTube may uh, take a moment or two to process it, but then it will be available for rewatching at the uh, at the same URL. So if I go too fast or you want to go back and see something again, uh, certainly you're able to do that. Um, it's a it's a great day here and uh, here in the Pacific Northwest, so uh, I'm glad we're here. Let's uh, get started. This is photo mechanic. Uh, we're looking at it here right now. Uh, what is Photo Mechanic? A real quick, brief description. Photo Mechanic is a photo browser. It's a metadata engine. It's a workflow tool. Uh, it's many different things to many different people. Uh, but basically what it is used for is to view, to manage, to edit, to uh, add metadata to um, digital images on your computer. Uh, one of the main uses for Photo Mechanic that a lot of people use it for is to use it to copy images from a memory card to their hard drive to use Photo Mechanic to add metadata and ratings to those images, add crucial metadata like copyright, keywords, um, captions, and then from there, send those images off to a post-processing software like Photoshop or Lightroom or Capture One or something of that sort, uh, or use Photo Mechanic to transmit those photos to the internet, whether that's Twitter, whether that's a photo shelter account, whether that's a Smug Mug account, an FTP site, uh, Photo Mechanic is a place to, to do that. Photo Mechanic does many other things as well in terms of managing metadata, but those are the main, um, the main uses. This is the Photo Mechanic window here. We call this the contact sheet. Uh, this is a view of a folder on my computer. Um, if you're new to Photo Mechanic, it's very important to know that there's no, Photo Mechanic doesn't really um, bring photos into Photo Mechanic per se. You don't have to import them into Photo Mechanic. This is a view of my computer here, and if I, um, these are all the folders on my computer. If I come down here and I double click on this folder, it opens up that folder in a contact sheet. These are now, these are all the images that are in this folder. It didn't import these images. Uh, these are just as they exist on my uh, hard drive. If I were to now delete an image from here, it would delete it off my hard drive. If I make a change to it, it makes, uh, it adds that to the image as it already exists. Uh, that's very, very important to know. A lot of people are used to, uh, people who are new to Photo Mechanic often say, how do I import my images into Photo Mechanic? Uh, as long as they're on your on your hard drive or on somewhere that's accessible to Photo Mechanic, they're already available for Photo Mechanic to look, to work on, to, um, to edit. If I double click on an image, it opens up in what we call the preview window. The preview window is a, an enlarged version of the photo. Um, we have some metadata up here. We have the rest of the images in the folder here. And then I can do some things over here with some um, some of these tools. Uh, Photo Mechanic does not edit pixels. If you, you don't use Photo Mechanic to um, color correct, to add filters, to add looks, um, convert to black and white. You don't use Photo Mechanic to do that per se. Uh, when we say edit photos, we mean edit in the, in the sense of selecting uh, keepers, getting rid of rejects and you know, finding, finding images that you're going to, want, going to work on. But, however, having said that, you can crop in Photo Mechanic, and you can use the Crop tool to do that. And the Crop tool basically just adds a, what we call a soft crop. It puts that information in the metadata of the image. It doesn't actually delete any pixels. I've created a crop here that would look like this. And if I were to drag this into Lightroom, um, it would be, you would see the crop in Lightroom. And if I need to preview that, I can either click this or hit the P key. Oop, I actually now rotated this. I can do that. Again, when you uh, rotate an image, there's the arrows up here to um, uh, rotate. It's, again, that's a soft rotation. It doesn't actually edit any of the pixels in the image. It just uh, does that in the metadata. Uh, we can also zoom into the... Oh, let's clear this crop first. Uh, we can also zoom into the image with the zoom tool and you can control the zoom here to see how much you need to zoom in uh, but the z key is often the faster way to do that 
Uh, in fact, if you are new to Photo Mechanic, I would highly suggest getting to know the keyboard shortcuts. And I will try to describe them whenever I use them in this webinar. Uh, but the Z key is the zoom, and you can control the zoom over here, or you can use the um, plus and minus to control the zoom level here. There's also a histogram. Um, if you're ingesting or you're looking at some raw files and you want to know if, say, the highlights are blocked up or, or the highlights are lost or the shadows are blocked up, you can use the histogram to do that. Um, all right. We've got some trucks outside. Sorry for the extra noise. Hopefully they'll uh, be going shortly. Uh, but in the preview window, you also have the ability to uh, view images side by side if you want to do that. You can do that via these controls here. Uh, you can change the position of this, what we call the film strip, to the side or the top, depending on you know what you want to do with your screen. And then you can go over here to do the full view, um, which gets rid of all the extraneous panes, um, and click this to restore that. And as you hover over these tools, you will see the keyboard shortcuts for them as well. So F to go to full and R to restore the panes. And this image here, this uh, information here is the, uh, some, some of this is EXIF data from the camera. Some of it is just other metadata, like the location of the file. And this metadata is customizable in Photo Mechanic. You can choose to show whatever metadata that's associated with the file that you need. Um, I have the dimensions in here. Um, I have the keywords in here. I've put those things in there. Uh, but you can change that. If you don't need to use these things, you can uh, edit those out or, or customize that, whatever you would like to do. And to close the preview window, you can obviously close this gadget, but the escape key is usually the fastest way to do that. All right, so photo mechanic, let's go back to this uh, other folders here. You can also have multiple um, contact sheets open, as you can see here, as many as you want. I can click on image uh, folders here and I have a number of tabbed contact sheets up here. But these images, these particular images, are images from a friend of Cam Britt's. Her name is Charmy Pena, a fantastic uh, destination wedding photographer, and she allowed us to use some images in our demonstration, so thank you, Charmy. Uh, she's also a Cam Britt's ambassador, so thank you very much for that. Um, you'll notice that these images all have colors down here, color bars, and star ratings, and some of them have this checkbox here. Now, when people use Photo Mechanic to identify their keepers, uh, or what images that they want to use later, or maybe identify rejects, things are out of uh, focus or you know not exposed properly. Uh, there are generally three main ways to identify photos. One is the color class, which we see here. The second is the star rating. And the third is this check marks here, we just call a tag. Um, as you can see, you can use any of those three, none of those three, or any conjunction of those three, uh, if you like, to uh, to sort of add ratings or, or evaluations of your photos so that you can go back and um, do things with them later. And say, what what's uh, one thing you would do? So up here we have the star rating widget and the color class widget. Um, if I deselect a star rating in the widget here, it gets it doesn't get rid of the images, but it hides it. It filters them out. So if I click this here, now I'm only looking at the four and five star images from this, um, this contact sheet in this folder. Those images, the other images are still in there. It's, they're just filtered out. And you can go back and re-enable those. Uh, and the same thing with the color uh, classes as well. If you want to take these out, now we're just looking at the, uh, the, the, the purple class images. One other tip a lot of people don't know, if you hold down on a Mac, if you hold down the option key, if you're on a Windows machine, if you hold down the um, uh, the Alt key, I believe, and click one of these, it automatically deselects the other. So if I only want to see the three star images, if I hold down Option and click three, automatically deselects all the others. And if I again hold down Option and re-click it, it restores the others. So that's a little time saving trick for you there. All right, um, Photo Mechanic also allows you to change the sort in your contact sheets. Up here, there's a, a you can choose to sort the image by pretty much any, any bit of metadata that you can uh, think of that's associated with the file. Uh, defaults to file name, but you can sort by capture time, modification time, uh, color class rating. You can even do a custom arrangement if you want, or any of these other, um, any of these other bits of metadata if you like. Um, I mentioned these, uh, these tags. Um, we can show uh, just the tagged images up here, or all of them. Uh, if you select some images, if you're working with someone and they you know, talk, talk about um, show me these three, you can choose to view only the selected. 
and go back to all. Uh, you can also view, choose to view just the untagged, like that. And here is where you can change the size of the thumbnails. If you need to see larger ones, smaller ones, if you have a lot, you want to see it on there. All right, and uh, as I said, this uh, this is called the navigator over here. This is the view of basically my, uh, my computer's uh, file system. Uh, up here is a separate pane called favorites, which is basically the same thing, but I can control what's in there. So if there's a, a folder that I use often, if I'm in here in uh, documents and see bits and I still, you know, want to put this up here, bam, I can put that into my favorites and then I can have quick access to that. If I need to get rid of it, I can come in here and remove it. So that's, that's, the, that's the basics of the interface. What I'd like to do now is get into uh, some of the metadata um, and I wanna cover variables. I know there was, a, I don't know if the person ended up making it, but there was someone in the camera bits forums who was asking about variables. So I definitely want to discuss variables and how they're used. And then we're going to do a demonstration of an ingest. I have a memory card here with some um, photos from a soccer game, and I'm going to copy those images from the memory card. I'm gonna use the ingest window to add some metadata while I copy those over. And then I'm gonna show you how you would use variables in metadata templates. But first let's just talk in general about metadata. Metadata is basically information about a photograph, everything from uh, the camera settings that were used, the model of the camera, the lens that was used, um, information about the creator, information about the photographer, their, um, their contact information, their copyright information, um, things like keywords, things like captions, things like who was in the photo. Uh, this is all metadata and Photo Mechanic is designed to enable you to manage that metadata, add it to photos, to change it, to um, move it around, um, to add it quickly. If I'm looking at an image and if I click this I key or click this I button here or just press the I key, it opens up the metadata IPTC info for this specific image. Um, there's not a lot of metadata associated with this file right here, but there is a keyword here, car. It's uh, not very helpful, but if I were to now want you to add more wedding in, uh, metadata into this image, I can just do it in this metadata IPTC info window. Click OK, and now I've added that keyword. I'm gonna come over here. Um, ooh, misspelled keyword. I need to fix that, so I'll change that to keyword. So that's um, how you would um, apply or change metadata to individual photos. Uh, that's all well and good, but say sometimes you want to add a keyword to a lot of photos or change metadata for a batch of photos. Uh, in fact, let's uh, add the, let's add Charmy Pena's uh, information to all these photos since she was the uh, photographer that took these. I would select all these images. Now I could just do uh, select the first, hold down shift and click the last to select them all. Or I could do command A on a Mac, a Mac or Control A, Command A on a Mac, Control A on a Windows machine to select all. And now what I want to do is open up the metadata IPTC info template. And let's talk a little bit about the difference. So what we saw before is the metadata info screen. There's the info screen and the template screen. They look very similar. The info, metadata info panel, gives you control over the image, the metadata for one specific image. The metadata template is something you use to add metadata to multiple images. So you get to that by doing Command I, and this is the metadata IPTC template. So any metadata I put in this field, I would apply that template to all these selected images. So if I wanted to put in here the, put the photographer's name in there, and if I now click this, apply a template to selected, it's going to apply to all these. So now if I go back into the metadata for this specific image, we see that this has been added to that image. So once again, just uh, to go over this, the metadata info screen, which you get by pressing I, does the, the metadata for one specific image. And control I, or excuse me, command I on a Mac or control I on a PC, does metadata in batches in, um, to apply all to all the selected images. So that's a, that's, a, that's a very important thing to know if you're using Photo Mechanic with metadata, um, the difference between the info screen and the template screen. Um, but uh, when we wanna add metadata, sometimes we wanna do it in uh, dynamic ways. And to do that, we might use variables. And this is, uh, like I said, I wanted to get into variables. 
Variables are a way to insert metadata into fields in the metadata screens um, that will take that metadata either from information in the in, that's already in the image or information that are in other fields and put that where you need it to go. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do a demonstration of that real quick. So let's look at this image, and let's say I wanted to put image information about the um, the photographer. If I'm writing a caption image by and I want to put the photographer's name in there but I don't uh, make you know maybe I'm working on a selection of images from different photographers or maybe I just don't want to retype it I want to put what's in this field but up in here I could retype this I could copy and paste it but if I'm going to be applying it to a number of images and I want to do it all at once um, I would do something add something called a variable a variable is just basically a, um, a control word that is in curly brackets and in this case, it's uh, variable photog is the variable that will put whatever's in this field into this area right here. So I typed in photog in curly brackets, image by photog. And if I say, OK, I'm apply this to the image. Now, if I go back into here, it is you can see it's evaluated the variable um, Charmy Pena into this uh, field right here. So that's very basically how we'd use uh, variables, but there are other ways to use variables as well. In fact, if you come down here to this button variables, we'll show you all the different variables that are available to you in Photo Mechanic, and there are a lot of them. Um, some of these uh, are around dates, uh, months, and time. In fact, let's uh, go ahead and show you how to use a variable to do something like the date. So in the copyright field, um, if I'm working on images or if I have a template and I want to put in the copyright year, or first of all, let's uh, put in the copyright symbol. And I want to say I want to put in the year. I could type in the year 2022. Um, but if I'm working on images and maybe as the year changes, it changes from December to January, I might forget to do that. Um, what I will do is put in the variable for the actual year. So if I come down here, there's a variable for the year for. Um, I can either type in in curly brackets year four or in this variables panel, I can actually just click it and it will insert it for me. So there's the variable year four. And then maybe um, in your copyright statement, you also want to have the photographer's name. So again, put that variable in here. Let's uh, close this. And if I were to apply this now, it would put in the year four in the photog. Um, but also there's a trick in photo mechanic. If I hold down the option key here, it changes the okay to eval which means it will evaluate the um, variables in my metadata screen and put that in there. So let's do that, evaluate. And there we go, the, uh, the, the date has been put in there and the uh, name has been put in there. So that's um, using variables in metadata IPTC info. Uh, but say you wanted to use uh, a reusable template. So let's uh, close this and let's, let's do this on a batch scale for all these images. So let's again, select these out and let's uh, select the a metadata template to apply to many different things. So we do Command I, and now let's uh, let's do the copyright, but for all these images. So let's again, we'll do put in year four, and this will automatically they'll, they'll kind of try to autofill if you if you start typing a variable that we recognize. We'll tug. So say I want to use this, like if I want to do this, if I'm working on images and I want to put copyright information here, and I want to do this um, often. What I would do is save this template. And I want to show you uh, a great way to do that. There's a, a few different ways to save a template, but sort of the easiest way is using this button down here. There's a lightning bolt. It's called the snapshot icon. And the snapshot icon allows you to save whatever is in the dialog box that you're looking at. You'll see this in almost all the dialog boxes in Photo Mechanic. This will allow you to save this as a template. So let's click this and I can save this as a template. We'll say, Charmy, copyright. We'll save that. So let's uh, let's not apply this to the image. Let's just cancel this out. Let's uh, not save that and say, now I'm coming back in and I, I'm working with different images. I come in here and say, now I want to apply some metadata. I can come down here and click this button again and we see all my saved templates. Oh, there's Charmy, copyright. Click that. There we go. It's putting in those things that I had saved into that. And now I can apply that to the um, all the selected images. And let's go for a look at the image here. There we go. It's added the copyright to that image. Um, and as you can see, it adds the, the, the year in um, dynamically. So the images that were taken in 2017, it automatically put in 2017. The images in 2018, it automatically put in 2018. 
So I only had to do that with you know one command, but the, the, using the variables allows me to do this in a dynamic way where I don't have to look up the date for every single photo. If I'm doing this for a larger group of photos, obviously you can imagine that would save you a lot of time. All right, so that's uh, that's using variables in metadata templates. Hopefully that was clear. Like I said, if you if you need to go back and watch this again, you should be able to do that. Um, this will be available on YouTube at the same URL. Let me check the chat to see if there are any questions. I don't see any now, but if you have any, make sure to drop them in the chat. All right, now what I want to do is the demonstration of the ingest. I want to show you how um, I would do an ingest where I copy images from my memory card, use um, ratings to pick the images that I want to keep or my, my favorites, um, maybe get rid of the rejects, and how I would add metadata. One of the guiding principles of photo mechanic and what we've tried to do as we've built photo mechanic over the years is the ability to combine many steps into a single step. Uh, the, mo the reason people use photo mechanic is to save time. Uh, photo mechanic is, uh, allows you to view a lot of images fast and to add uh, metadata very quickly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy images from a memory card to our computer. But at the same time as we do that, we're gonna add metadata at the same time as we do that, we're going to um, create folders and we're going to rename the files all in the same step. So how are we gonna do that? Let's uh, take a look at the ingest dialog. So I have a memory card in my memory card reader here. Um, if I do command G opens up the ingest dialog. Uh, you can also find it up here in the, mem the menu, but uh, command G on a Mac or control G on a Windows machine is the best way to do that. So here's the ingest dialog. There's a lot of options here. Uh, don't be intimidated. We can go through each of these in uh, turn and we talk about what they will do. Uh, but the first thing you want to do is pick a primary destination. Consider this the root folder. Um, basically, you would select your pictures folder where you would want this to go. Um, I might do something like um, actually just put it in my pictures folder. So that's my root destination. And then down here, you'll be able to fine tune that, create subfolders, um, do things like this, but this is just your root folder. Uh, and if you wanna do a secondary folder, you can also do that. If I had to say a backup drive that I want to um, ingest files to, Photo Mechanic can do them both at the same time, uh, but we're gonna not that can do that this time. Uh, we're gonna talk about what filters, what files we wanna copy. We can copy the locked and the unlocked photos. We can copy the raw and the non-raw. Copying locked or unlocked photos, what is this used for? Well, um, especially in sports, if you're covering sports or an event and you see an image that you know is high priority, whether it's a particular touchdown that was scored or a goal was scored or an image that you need to hit the wire service as quickly as possible. Um, if you do any sports photography, you know that the first photo to the wire is usually the one that gets picked up and uh, that's what gets you paid. So you wanna be able to get that quickly. What you'll do is lock that image in your camera um, that's something most uh, most modern cameras can do, will lock an image. And if you choose copy locky photos, it will only copy that photo in so that you can get to working on it, um, get it, get your metadata added and sent off to the wire service as fast as possible. Um, but we're gonna do, for this purpose, we'll just do all. Um, but now we're going to be able to apply metadata to the photos as they're being copied over, so not in a separate step. So let's uh, take a look at this. This checkbox will allow us to apply the metadata. And what metadata are we going to apply? We're going to apply one of those metadata templates. So let's click this. This is going to open up the template. Uh, and we'll see here, we have some information that I saved from the last time I did this. But this is a metadata template we're going to apply to this group of images. As I said, these are images from a soccer game and they were shot by a photographer here in Portland. His name is Howard Lau. Thank you very much, Howard, for allowing us to use your photographs here in this demonstration. And um, we have information about the game. Um, here's some variables at use again. We have the Timbers game, but we want to put the date, but I don't want to look up the date of the, Im the, um, the, the match. I just want to put this in here and that way I don't have to look up the date. I don't have to change this. I can save this um, template to use every single time I get images from Howard. And this will automatically put the date in um, and I never have to look it up. So that's great. Uh, information about Howard here, his, uh, his contact information, his copyright information. Again, using variables. So let's close the template. Now, when Photo Mechanic does the ingest or the copying of the files from the memory card, it's going to apply that metadata to those photos. Uh, at the same time, let's rename these fi files. Um, if I click this, check this box here, I can rename the files in the same step. Um, and it's interesting to know that variables also work in the renaming. So um, let's rename the files with Howard's name, Photog. And then let's put in, oh, let's say the frame number from the camera. 
or no, let's do the date. We can do the date. Um, that's also a good one. Actually, we'll do the date. And there's a variable called date sort, which puts all the dates, um, the, puts the, um, the year, the month, and the day in one sortable um, number field. So that's sort of a shortcut to do a complex date. And then again, let's see, use the frame number in the camera as a way to differentiate between the images. So we're gonna rename those folders. And then we're going to put these images within my root uh, folder. I wanna create a new folder. So let's put this into, um, we have the opportunity to put it in a folder with a name and you can also use um, variables here. So let's, uh, in within my pictures folder, I do wanna put this in my demo folder. I can also go into, now let's create, um, uh, let's take a look. And if I were to use the job field here, you can see the job, I've put timbers in here because the Portland timbers is maybe who this is for. So let's uh, we'll say, okay, so if I just put in the variable for job, it's going to create the folder. I don't have to go into Finder or Explorer and it create a folder. It's going to do that. And then I can create another folder for the date. Let's do the date sort with dashes just to see what that looks like. All right, so we're, we're basically ready. We're gonna um, select this card. We're gonna copy the images to this root folder and then these subfolders. We're going to apply this metadata to the images. We're going to be renaming the files um, with these variables, and we're going to be putting them in this folder. Um, down over here, we have some other things. You can choose to erase the desk, disk after ingest. Uh, I never do that because I'm always paranoid. But sometimes I will choose to unmount the source disk if I need to head back out to the field as quickly as possible. Uh, PhotoMechanic can do the unmounting, um, so I don't have to go into Finder and do that. But that's, uh, that's the basics. So let's, uh, let's do this and we'll see how it works. Ingest, here we go. Copying images, here come in the images. Um, let's take a look at, uh, if I double click, it will open up the image. Here it is, it's, it's got the name, and here's the file name. The file names have been renamed Howard Lau, date sort, and then the frame number, .cr2. This is a raw image from the camera file. Um, what else? This is also, now let's look in the uh, demo folder. It created demo, it created this timbers folder. I didn't have to create this. And it created the subfolder, the the um, the dated the folder right there. So these are where they're coming in. Um, like I said, I didn't have to create these folders. Photo Mechanic did that for me, so that's uh, very helpful to to be able to not have to you know spend time in um, in in Finder doing that. So here's the images coming out. So now what I would do is I would do uh, what can be called a culling session or just an editing session um, to find some of the images. Um, I'll. And here's how I do a call. And you, you know, everyone can do calling a little bit differently. Um, I'm gonna show you how I call. I use star ratings. Um, star ratings are just how I tend to think about images, you know, zero through five stars. Um, you can use both obviously, or use tags, but uh, I personally start with the star ratings. And to do that, I wanna go into preferences. I wanna show you a couple settings and preferences to um, how I like to set up photo mechanic as I do a call. Um, and it's good for you to have an introduction to how we do preferences. So to call up the photo mechanic preferences um, on a Mac, it's command comma, control comma if you're on a Windows machine. So here's the preferences section of photo mechanic, uh, at least as it's shown on a Mac machine. There are different sections of preferences, a lot of different sections. These are all available in the drop down here. Uh, if you look at this on a Windows machine, you'll see a bunch of tabs up here which have the exact same sections. But we have general contact sheet files launching a lot of things in here. I wanna show you just a couple um, settings. First of all, uh, these are the settings for the color classes and you can set these, remember this uh, this lightning bolt here always tells you if I want to save uh, information that's in a dialogue to use later. So we have some presets in here and one of these presets is to use with Adobe Lightroom, which is what I've chosen. Um, Adobe Lightroom only uses the five colors. That's why the six, seven, and eight all look the same as purple. But if these were Photo Mechanic 6 default or the Adobe Bridge, but here we go, different colors here. Um, but if I, since I'm, if I were to be using Lightroom, which a lot of people do, choose the preset, and there's the preset for all the Adobe Lightroom images. I wanna show you the preference under preview window. And this preference is automatically advanced to the next photo in the preview window when the tag is changed, or the color class has changed, or the rating has changed. What this allows me to do is when I'm looking at an image in the preview window and I add a rating to it, it will automatically advance to the next photo. So that saves me a click or a tap. And one other preference I wanted to show you in the accessibility section of preferences is the single key shortcuts. So if I'm 
calling and I want to be adding ratings to my photos, I want to do it with just a single key. I don't have to do control or command anything, any modifier. I just want to use the number keys. And I can choose to have the number keys either set the rating or the number keys can set the color class. Like I said, I use star rating, so I have this set to set rating. Um, if I want to add a color class to an image, I can still do that using the, the full keyboard shortcut, as it were, which uh, would be command and then a number to set a color class. But to do the, the star rating, I had to set to just use the number keys because that is the fastest. So let's uh, click OK. And let's show this in practice. I'm going to, to do a call session, I would click on the first image, open it up in the preview window. And now if I want to add a rating to this, this is uh, this is decent, not too bad. I'll give this two stars. If I hit the two key, just my fingers on the number pad here, adds a two star rating and automatically moves to the next image. So as I go through here, I can go and start hitting numbers. That's uh, that's good. Maybe that's a four star. That's a little bit better. Maybe that's a uh, one, not as much, not as good. There we go. There's uh, maybe that's two. And I can go through here and as I start um, getting my feet under me as I'm, I start uh, hitting a rhythm here. I'm like, I like, there we go. There's, um, so I can start going in here and, you know, I'll start making snap judgments as I'm doing this, you know, my my initial emotional feel to a call, I can start doing this and adding, you know, that's no, no. And, and then we see here some uh, some missed frames. Um, get, I'll just give them one star. Um, I always, I do one stars for my for my rejects so that if I come back, if I say now I, I'm in here and this is a reject and I come back and I say I have to go get a cup of coffee or something and come back. If I want to see the images I haven't rated yet, I can just show me the zero stars. And these are the images I haven't seen yet. So if I were for some reason interrupted in my calling session, I could do that. Let's uh, go back into here, go back into the first one and start doing this and start, you can start putting these ratings in here, that's a little out of focus. And if I need to like check the focus, so let's go back. And you can use the uh, the arrow keys to go back even after you set a rating. So how I do it is I have my hand on my number pad, but my thumb on the arrow keys. So I'm like, let's, uh, you know, I can go back and see, we look at something. If I have the Z key with my, my left hand, I can zoom in and see just how out of focus this is. That's fine, oh, I didn't want to crop that, remove that. Um, turn off the crop teal. Yeah, so I can drag this around. And if I, I can leave this zoomed in and I can start looking at different images as I'm zoomed in so I can check the focus. There's uh, there's Steve Clark there looking around. Good job, Steve. He's the keeper for, for the Portland Timbers, or he used to be uh, when this photo was taken at least. I'll the, hit the zoom key to zoom back out. We can go back in here. And yeah, so you can go through here. I'm not gonna do the whole take, but I just wanted to show you how this works. Uh, and another thing I wanted to show you here, I'm looking at some raw files taken from a camera, file, camera Canon camera. Uh, Photo Mechanic uses the embedded JPEG preview. When a, when a camera takes a file, even if you're shooting just raw, the camera will put a JPEG in the raw file so that when you press play button on your camera, it can show you an image. The camera isn't actually rendering the raw file. It's not interpreting the raw data and creating an image. It's already saved in JPEG so that it can show you that image on your LCD. Photo Mechanic uses that image to be able to show you the image quickly. So if I just were to say, hold down an arrow key, and scroll through all of these images. These are all raw images, and you can see how fast Photo Mechanic goes from image to image. This is uh, one of the reasons why people use Photo Mechanic to do this. Because Photo Mechanic is not a pixel editor, it doesn't have to prepare the image for editing. It doesn't have to render the raw file. It can just show me the preview, and it can do it very, very quickly. Uh, Photo Mechanic also uses a lot of technology in terms of um, sort of preloading different things and sort of predicting you know, what the next image is going to be to doing that. So you can, being able to do this and go through this image very fast, and you don't have to wait a couple seconds for each image. Um, like I said, I can start going through here and adding ratings very quickly. Actually, I don't want to do those for, go back. One, there we go. So let's do one, one. Wait for a good, that's, ooh, that's a good, some action shot. Maybe I'll give that a four. Getting, you know, um, say, oh, I want to look at these images. Like, oh, I want to see which of these is actually the one I want to use. I can, let's zoom into both of them and I can see, I'll turn that off again. Clear that. I want to see what the action actually is. I can, you know, do this and, and look around and, and compare these images like this. And I can come through and find the exact images I actually want. Um, I can hit the O go to go, to go back and hit Z to get back out. So there we go. We can. I've looked in here and I can, you know, find the image, the actual images I want, especially in a burst. That's very useful to use the side by side. So I'll do this and let's, uh, let's come out of this. And so now if I were to say, I only want to see the three stars that 
deselect, uh, show me three and above. Here are the images that I've selected to use. Obviously there's some better ones to come, but these are the ones I've rated so far. And now if I need to get these into Lightroom, I can just select them all and drag them to wherever my Lightroom is, or here's, if I drag them, I can drag them into Photoshop and show that. Um, Photoshop will open up here. And this will be Camera Raw because we're looking at raw files, so Photoshop will open up Camera Raw once it, once it wakes up, there we go. Oh, yeah, so let's uh, get started, Camera Raw. So here's all these images right here that I can now um, edit in Camera Raw if I wanted to. Uh, I could, if I drag them to Lightroom, Lightroom, the import module would open up. Um, so let's, uh, that's how I would do that if I were to bring these in and work on them. Well, let's take a look at the metadata though. Let's go into the metadata. And here's the information that I copied in. Remember I put the metadata template in when I did the ingest. Here's information about the, the dates up here, information about that, Howard's copyright information, um, the year the photo was taken, um, all that stuff auto added automatically. So all those things were done in that um, step. So that's, uh, that's it. That's uh, kind of a basics of how I would do a call, how I would you know identify the ones I want to use. Like I said, if I want to now add a color class to some of these, um, and I don't need to use the single key, if I just do, say, um, Command-2, we'll add the yellow. Um, Command-1, we'll add a red, um, and so on. So that's, uh, that's always still available to you, no matter what you have the single key um, setting set to. You can still add a, a color class or still check here. And if I were doing this in the preview window, I could same thing. If I had uh, command two adding yellow, it's going to add the yellow color class and move to the next. So there's the yellow color class there, three stars yellow. And you can refine that. So now I just want to say, show me three stars and above and only the yellow. Option click yellow. There we go. So that is a basic culling session in Photo Mechanic. And that's, uh, that's it. That's, that's sort of the basics. Let's see if we have any questions here. I don't see any questions. I hope that means I did a good, jo good job or covered what you need me to cover. Uh, let me talk a little real quickly about Photo Mechanic Plus. So uh, basically what I showed you was the functionality that's included in Photo Mechanic 6. Um, Photo Mechanic Plus is a sort of a deluxe version of Photo Mechanic that also includes a image database. And if I come over here, um, everything you've seen me do is available in Photo Mechanic 6. Photo Mechanic Plus has this tab up here, which brings up this search um, field, a search tool with ability to search, filter, and browse. And I can, I've created a database of images in different drives up here. And if I need to now manage, um, if I, let's take a look at uh, browse here. So in my catalog, I have um, 77,000 images here. If I want to look at images, you know, by I wanted to manage my entire history of images. I can come down here and, and do that using Photo Mechanic Plus. That, this would be a separate uh, a demo, but I just wanted to quickly show you what Photo Mechanic is. Um, you can think of Photo Mechanic 6 as, as really a tool you use for individual shoots um, or you know individual events or, or a, you know, a limited number of images. But if you need to manage large numbers of images, um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of images, we've used, uh, we've seen databases with over uh, many millions of files and we can um, come in here for example if i were just to do a search for nothing which will show me everything there are um, eighty-two thousand images in this contact sheet and as you can see i can see these all eighty-two thousand images a lot of the a lot of things in here and i can scroll through here and photo mechanic will handle you know looking at eighty thousand images very very easily so that's uh that's the lure of photo mechanic plus it's the ability to have this database attached to photo mechanic. Uh, some of these images are on uh, removable drives, so I don't have to have the drive connected. Um, if you see this yellow dot, it means I've uh, indexed this image and put it on a, it's on an external drive, and then I unplugged it and stored it, but now I can now find it. And if I click this and I open it up, I can see um, what folder it was. It's actually the Mixon uh, drive, which is one of my SanDisk drives. So I know that's where it is. If I need to go find this image, I just have to find the one labeled Mixon, take it out and plug it in, and then this image will be available to me and I can do with it what I please. So that's, uh, that's a quick 10,000 foot view of Photo Mechanic Plus. Um, hopefully that was helpful. All right, thank you very, very much for uh, coming. This has uh, been an introduction to Photo Mechanic. If you have any other questions, certainly don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we're a small company, but we make customer support one of our you know, it's very much a priority for us. If you give us a call uh, during business hours, a human being will pick up the phone and can you know, talk you through 
um, what you need to do if you're new to photo mechanic, if you have a question if it can do something or how you would do something or even just advice to how to set up your uh, set up your your machine or your set up your preferences, uh, give us a call. We're happy to work that through out with you. Um, so here's the we have a, a help section here on at DOCS that's docs.camerabits.com. And we have a knowledge base here. We have a lot of getting started articles, um, things about, you know, how, or articles about setting up your preferences, your settings, best practices. Um, if I just do a search for variables here, here's some information, here's, some in, here's an article on introduction to um, variables, which we have here. It shows you all, how you would use the variables, um, examples of how you do it. Um, here's a whole list of all the variables and all the descriptions. So yeah, those are all available at uh, and you can get to this if you're looking at camerabits.com. If you just come to support, if you click support, it takes you to the that help center. Actually, this is the admin view, so don't look at that. Um, but if I were to, if you were to click on this as a as a customer, you would see that. And you can also contact us. Um, if we click contact, you can either send us an email here, or there's our phone number. Like I said, give us a call. Uh, send us an email. You don't even need to use the form, and we're happy to get back to you. It's uh, it's what we it's what we do. We want to make sure that photo mechanic works for you and helps saves you time and get back to work and uh, get out there and uh, do your business, get your business done, um, take more photographs. All right, thanks very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, hopefully, this was great for you. My name has been Mick. This has been Photo Mechanic One Hundred and One. Um, yeah, thank and have a great rest of your day and happy photographing. Cheers, all.